Frank Skarin prepping for the event with Metagame Gurus. Mentioned before, looking to turn around his Sunday. Was the only 9-0 player yesterday. He'll be doing it on a six-card hand on the draw. Shaheen starts out with a choked estuary. At this point in the tournament, with so many big names and so many players who know each other near the top of the standings, you have to think that players know their matchup before they sit down. Mm -hmm. For these two players, I imagine they have a very good idea what the other deck looks like, down to cards. Well, he's playing against Shaheen. I mean, you know that's Esper, right? Yeah. These two lands don't give him any new information. When, you're, when there's only one 9-0 player, usually the whole room knows what he's on. Mm -hmm. It's the story, right? Oh, there's one undefeated guy. Oh, cool. What was he playing? Yeah, and even though he's not wearing the Metagame Guru's jersey. They know? They know. Traverse the Ulfen Vault, the first play of the game from Frank. It's turn two. Last round, we saw Frank really struggle to keep pace with a Crush of Tentacles deck. Not much made sense. Mm -hmm. Sheen's deck would also struggle to keep pace with the Crush of Tentacles deck. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't. Crush, man. It crushes, play it, that. It crushes the field. Well, most of the field. Not, there's still <laughs> those four monoid humans, guys. It's just, oh, goodness. Hey, I, it's not they're, perfect. They're, I didn't say are, perfect. The cards are embarrassingly bad against one drop. Oh, yeah. Six mana bounce effects, not great against one mana two ones. Going to Shaheen's third turn. Can he start on a Planeswalker? Some sort of pressure. He'll just pass. No Liliana. Frank got a swamp off that traverse. So he might just play, plays it and might just train Dharma Don it up. Here we go with the zombie. Prized Amalgam. Beatdowns are online. Yup. Got the old no spell, one mana spell, three spell curve. Choked Estuary from Shaheen into Narset Transcendent. Narset is a Planeswalker that is very medium, but very loyal. That is the best thing that this Planeswalker has going I, for I it. I love Shaheen's decks. Look, turn four, Narset, plus it put Oath of Jace in my hand. Yeah, I'm going to play some Planeswalkers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even going to play the ones that you don't think are playable. I'm going to beat you with them. Narset goes down to four from Prized Amalgam. The thing about Narset is she's extremely loyal. Yes. And Skarin has not yet cast any Gather the Packs, any Grapple with the Past, which presumably is what he's leaving up here, but he has to start getting cards in his graveyard, start making more Amalgams and Haunted Deads happen. I mean, I'll tell you, I play a lot of Limited, and when one player plays a bunch of Planeswalkers and the other player plays a 3-3 three, three for 3, and that's it for the first four turns, it's not a fair fight. The nice thing about playing a Constructed deck instead of a Limited deck is you're generally able to overcome more obstacles. <laughs> yeah. So Shaheen's play there was Obnixilis Reignited. He killed the prized Amalgam, then he plus the Narset and drew a Grasp of Darkness. For Frank, he's going to miss Land Drop 5 and just play Haunted Dead. And right when your deck's all Planeswalkers, you snowball these games so hard. Like, Shaheen's board presence is just becoming overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And the texture of this game is exactly what Shaheen is looking for in this matchup. He wants to get these early Planeswalkers in addition to Skarin's engine not really being online. He hasn't started casting enablers. He doesn't have a ton going on. He does have the one Amalgam and the Haunted Dead going now, so he'll be able to start pressuring Planeswalkers, but Shaheen has a follow-up Sorin and looks like other options on top of that. Yeah, plus his Obnixilis, plus his Narset. Casts Descend Upon the Sinful. He'll just exile away Frank's Haunted Dead. And getting that Haunted Dead in the Exile makes it more likely that that prized amalgam is stranded. That, that's, it's possibly that that is Shaheen's best card in this matchup. Yeah, you talked about how you needed to exile the sticky creatures. Frank will play another Haunted Dead, but once again, it's that limited thing, right? We're playing limited uncommons against Planeswalkers. It's just not a fair fight. <laughs> Shaheen is drawing... A million cards a turn off these Planeswalkers. And the design behind Skarin's deck is high synergy, and he's just casting his nuts and bolts and not combining anything. This is not his deck performing anywhere near its peak. Looks like Shaheen picked up a Transgress the Mind. He's now deciding whether or not to rebound it with Narset. Which sounds sweet, but... I mean, all his plays sound sweet. Casting Sorin sounds great. <laughs> You see Shaheen has 
right now eight cards in his hand, and he's on turn seven. So it's just pretty perfect. Narset's going to give the next spell rebound, and yeah, that's going to be transgress the mind. So here's the first one, and the second one is going to happen again on Sheen's next turn. So we look at the hand. Elder Deep Fiend. Prized Amalgam. Kozilex Return. Kozilex Return. Returns, not very significant. Deep Fiend, by far the best card in the hand. It's something that Scarin could cast on the following turn. Sheen's going to write it down. Looks like he'll... Yeah, he's already kind of decided he's going to take the Deep Fiend. That's what it looked. If you leave Scarin with just a bunch of 3-3s, three now he's going to take Prized Amalgam. So a Scarin's following turn would consist of casting the Amalgam. This way he knows it's exiled. That limits Scarin's outs for really getting back into this game. As long as he has some way to deal with the Deep Fiend on the table, that pick makes sense. Oath of Jace. Shaheen draws three, discards two. Yeah, and that second ability on it, if you aren't familiar with it, pretty good here too. He discards a pair of lands, plays a land, and will Grasp of Darkness down the Haunted Dead. So he'll get to scry two now every turn. Team Planeswalkers going to run away with this. Now, the Gatewatch wasn't really Narset and Obnixilis. In fact, but, uh, Obnixilis is one of those Planeswalkers that is the antithesis of the Gatewatch. It's almost as egregious as Nicol Bolas with the Jace. Narset's okay. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that Narset would get line. along with the other members of the Gatewatch. Just a spirit token for Frank. He will attack Obnixilis. It goes down to three. His, we know Frank's hand is a Deep Fiend and two Kozilex returns. Mm -hmm. And here's the rebounded Transgress the Mind. And what, yeah, Frank's going to have to cast in response. He's going to bring back that Haunted Dead, discard the two returns, and he's going to try to emerge Deep Fiend out of it. Jean's deck doesn't really have much in the way of counterspell elements, so this will get on the table anyway. Yeah, here's the emerge. This is on Shaheen's upkeep as he tries to, to rebound the transgress. I was a little confused. This is the play where I was didn't understand exactly why Shaheen's first transgress wasn't at the Deep Fiend, because the second one's going to miss now. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine, don't right. get me wrong. Specifically, he just kind of wanted to exile the Amalgam. The thing about the Deep Fiend, he's still able to deal with it. He has the Obnixilis on three loyalty. Okay, so he just really needed that exile to happen. Mm -hmm. Just determined that the only way that Scarin is winning this game is by getting a bunch of prize Amalgams for free. And picking the Amalgam there limited the option for that to happen. So he did get to look at Scarin's hand. The card was a Vessel of Nascency, so he couldn't really take it off the Transgress. He will use up Nixlist to finish off the Elder Deep Fiend, but he loses the Planeswalker in doing it and just passes the turn. Mm -hmm. There will be more where that came from. Now Frank brings back the prized amalgam. He had used Haunted Dead that turn. Yeah, and he's got a lethal attack on Narset if Shaheen doesn't have something. What you get for casting the fake gate watch? <laughs> <laughs> Narset down as well. So Shaheen out of Planeswalkers, but full of cards. Mm -hmm. I believe multiple Soren Grim Nemesis in hand. You know, that's also not part of the gate watch. No. It's closer. He helps them out. This I, deck is really an embarrassment, is what you're saying. The flavor behind it, I'm, yeah. <laughs> this, this isn't how the story goes. <laughs> Frank played the vessel and keeps one card in hand. Of note, Frank only has one green mana. It was off the Yavamaya coast. Right, I'll have to wait a turn to crack the vessel. Dark Petition for Shaheen Sarani. He does have Spell Mastery. He'll get three black off it. And he already has a Languish in this hand. We've seen him do this before where he actually Dark Petitions, but he doesn't... It's not like he's casting the card he needs... He's getting right away. It's like he's playing this because it's pretty efficient right now, mana-wise. He's got a window for it. He's going to Dark Petition, make three, and then maybe Languish. Mm -hmm. So three black floating. And he gets a card for later. Yeah. And he found Jace Friend's Prodigy. Great. First member of the Gatewatch. Yep. And he disguises the fact that he already had the Languish with this line. Right. Sure makes it look like he is tutoring for the Languish. So does that. Casts Languish. 
Remaining two mana, plays Jace Friend's Prodigy, and Frank got an empty board, cannot end step crack the vessel. And there's a trick we've seen Jaheen do here, if you're not familiar with it, with Jace and Oath of Jace, is that, and he's, I, he's likely to do it, if upkeep, he flips Jace into a Planeswalker, he gets a scry one. Yep. Be able to scry before he has to draw the card for his draw step. Oath of Jace, also his Delirium Enabler, though he has already cast Descend upon the Simple. Yeah, he was saying this card has been great for him, except in Emrakul Mirrors, it has been a liability. There was a, a Salumgar's Command that we saw Michael Majors cast against Shaheen out of Shaheen's hand on an Emrakul turn that was pretty brutal. Frank passes. Shaheen's going to make that upkeep play. Going to turn Jace into a Planeswalker. He's got two Sorens, a Grasp of Darkness, and one other. Discards one of the Sorens. Jace flips. And now he gets to scry one. His hand, Emrakul, Sorin, Grasp. He's just going to cast Emrakul now. Four card types, nine lands. That'll do it. Jace pluses. Now he'll take Frank's turn. And this Emrakul should wrap things up here. Frank deciding how much more of this game he wants to play. He'll crack the vessel on his own end step. He'll do that on his own terms. If Shaheen gets a chance, he'll crack it for nothing. Sees two lands, Grapple and Ishkana. And if you were able to bin some more amalgams, do we get a haunted dead, bring them all back into the battlefield? That'd be fine here. And a noose constrictor in the main deck for Frank as well, as we saw there. He's discards to bring back Haunted Dead. This card's land and Noose Constrictor. Now we're going to get to the Emrakul turn. So a vessel drawn by Frank. Mm -hmm. And he did this end step so that the prized Amalgam Trigger will be happy again on, on his turn. So it'll come back here so that Shaheen can't just throw away that Amalgam. No Haunted Dead in the yard, but if Shaheen wants to, he can make Frank lose those cards in hand. He can attack with Haunted Dead, bring it back, discard the hand. Right. Certainly won't just be casting Ishkana. Here's the attack. Yeah, attack. Blocks with Haunted Dead. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that back into play. Get rid of those cards. And then punch yourself. One with the Yavamaya Ghost. Pretty good turn for Shaheen. There is not much game on Frank's side to deal with Emrakul. He does get a, haunt, a prized amalgam for his troubles. And Frank's draw is gather the pack on his own turn. He's going to mill five. Finds a haunted dead, perhaps. He can take fifth card, Elder Deep Fiend. That was the creature he was looking for. Okay. He can cast that. It has Kozilek's return. That's not particularly good in this matchup. But no. he does have the creature to emerge off of as well. We'll see just what he wants to do here. Three mana. And the, and the Haunted Dead means that he has Deep Fiend set up. Mm -hmm. Sheen's still at a healthy 18. Right. And Frank won't be able to kill the Jace this turn. That he can tap down the Emrakul and lose the requisite power or attack into it and not have enough attackers get through. And he'll go to Shaheen's turn. Upkeep, we're going to see the Eldrazi. Here's Elder Deep Fiend, Haunted Dead back into the yard. Cast trigger, he gets to tap four permanents, will be Emrakul and some number of lands. Reaching for all the white sources. All right, that makes sense. Picks a dual land to go with him. So Shaheen won't be able to cast Sauron in this turn unless he peels a white source. Yeah, Shaheen will get to scry one. But that said, Shaheen still has tons of options. His hand is Silumgar's Command, Grasp of Darkness, Sorin. And don't forget about that Jace that's in play on six. Any of those cards in his graveyard are fair game. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a Dark Petition. Yeah, he has Dark Petition yeah. for a lot of options. He has Descend Upon the Simple in his graveyard. He would lose his Emrakul. So. It is a heads-up play on Frank's side to tap those white sources so Frank doesn't flashback Descend Upon the Simple. Right. 
At least not on this turn. You see, this is a scry one from Oath of Jace that Shaheen's resolving. He'll draw a card afterward. The Slumgar's command will be good for getting him through this turn. Well, with Shaheen at 18 and threatening things like this Jace, this Emrakul, Frank really is in top deck mode. Mm -hmm. Here's Silumgar's command. He's actually doing all this. He floated the mana. And then he shrank the Deep Fiend and bounced a token and then cast Languish. That's really okay. That's why he threw minus three to the Deep Fiend. This makes sense. Plus is the Jace says go. Mm -hmm. And Scarin's able to bring back Haunt the Dead and Amalgam here, though it's Far from good enough on this table. So Shaheen's going to be attacking for 13 on the following turn, unless Frank specifically has another Deep Fiend to pair with that combination. Yeah, he'll attack Frank down to two. And remember, Shaheen has a Soren in hand. If he wants to, he can just go for the kill. Right. Odds of that being lethal are fairly high. Especially, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Scries to the bottom from the Jace. Now he will draw another Grasp. So he'll swing for 13 with Emrakul. Will Frank do anything? No, he's going to go to two. Soren. Yeah, Frank, no, nah, we're done. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> don't even show me. I don't want to know. All right, so game one over to Shaheen Sarani, the Esper control player, grinding it out as it's as he is wont to do, he's up a game here. And for Frank, the, the slide continuing. We're going to look at their sideboards, though. So with Sultai Emerge, it just seemed that Frank's cards, well, certainly the Kozal X return package didn't matter. I assume he can board into some better things. Yeah. Uh, so for the sideboard here, we have two Pulse Marasa, two To the Slaughter, two Transgress the Mind, two Ultimate Price, two Collective Brutality, a Languish, an Infinite Obliteration, a Nissa Vastwood Seer, a Guilt Leaf Winnower, and a Mountain. Uh, the... Nissa Vastwood Seer is kind of nice here. It gives him another way to play long in this kind of matchup if he wants to get up to seven lands. Um, Collective Brutality can snipe a Languish out of Shaheen's hand if that's the angle he wants to be going here. Transgress the Mind, the better discard spell. That one for sure coming in, get the Planeswalkers out. Can also use To the Slaughter as an Edict for the Planeswalkers. That seems like a reasonable tool here. Yeah, that's actually pretty good because Shaheen doesn't have any creatures to play defense for his Planeswalkers. Right, and he would also get Emrakul if he ended up in a game like that game one. Sure. So, Frank, a lot of pretty good sideboard options. We go to Shaheen's side now. He has options of his own. A ton of one ofs. So, 13 different cards. We're going to run through them quick. Murder, Ruinous Path, Infinite Obliteration, Pick the Brain, Duress, Call the Bloodline, Coax from Blind Eternities, Emrakul, Dragonlord Silumgar, Transgress, Ojatai's Command, and then a pair of Kalidus and a pair of Negate. Transgress, Kalidus, Infinite Obliteration, Obliteration, all great. You can use Pick the Brain kind of on the same axis there. So I see what you're doing here. The cards you named are all the cards that exile in Shaheen's <laughs> sideboard. Yep. Yeah, he wants to try to be as heavy on that as possible in this matchup. Prized Amalgam is not very threatening if you only have to deal with it once. How do you feel about Dragonlord Slumgar? So Frank, does, if, if Frank's boarding out the Kozilex returns, then mm -hmm. this 3-5 will stick around and... Hey, yeah, I'd steal a 5-6. Yeah, and Frank is not presenting anything that is so threatening that gaining control of it is really going to turn games. But if you take his 5-6, you're probably making a significant inroads on his board. Might see that as well. So for Shaheen Sarani, this Esper control deck was the talk of the Invitational, a perfect 8-0. Shaheen did not end up topping the event as Modern fell apart for him. That Invitational eventually was won by Liam Lonergan. So we're going to run through what that means. Liam is qualified for our Players' Championship, and we have player tokens. So first we're going to look, we have the Max McVitie token. So if you haven't seen this one, this is the Clue token. He was our Season 1 Invitational winner. That token is, has been, we've been giving it away at all our events in Season 2. This is the last event this weekend that you can get it in person, because when we're back in sub later September in two weeks, we're going to be switching to our new token, which is the Liam Lonergan Elf Warrior token. Once again, this is just just love these. Well, you, you, you're an Imperious yeah. Perfect fan? I do like Imperious Perfect. I, I'm more of like a 
uh, Elvish Promenade, Hunting Triad kind of player, <laughs> right? If I'm making elves, I want to make 20, 30 of them. But yeah, this is great. So this will be given away starting on our, at September 23rd. So how you get this new token, you play in any open in Season 3, any classic in Season 3, or if you can't make it out to one of our events, any order from StarCityGames.com if at least $5 ships with one of these tokens. So we'll be giving these out for all of Season 3, and you're going to want to get a chance to get them. Mm. I am. Going to need, need a, a few lot. of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dwayne's Elite is a real modern card. This elf deck looked very good when we covered it in the Invitational. Edo and the Swiss swept the top eight. Obviously, he won the tournament. So back here for game two, Frank will be on the play. He was on a mulligan last time, but it's really just on him to have pressure. Uh, he had his curve didn't cooperate, but it didn't feel like the prized amalgams and haunted deads ever posed enough of a threat. Mm -hmm. His draw didn't come together in the way he needed it to. He had a haunted dead and an amalgam. It was fine, but he really needs to be start starting to make two amalgams off the same activation. He's got something good going this time in Jace Friend's Prodigy. Will Shaheen kill it? No, but he'll transgress the mind. And we take a look at the cards. Two prized amalgams, a land number three. It's Yavamaya Coast, so it fixes his colors. We see an Elder Deep Fiend. And then... I believe, I believe Haunted, Haunted Dead. Dead is the last one. Haunted Dead might be the most threatening card of the bunch here. I mean, if Shaheen didn't have Transgress, look at what was lined up. Jace, discard, Haunted Dead, discard two prized amalgams to it. Yeah. Oh, gross. That would have been brutal. Yeah, so Shaheen will have none of that. He'll take the Haunted Dead. Now we're back to Frank Scarin. Plays the Avamaya Coast. Something off green mana. Not totally sure what it is. Here's Gather the Pack. Could get creatures off it. We see Deep Fiend, Jace. Two lands and a Gather. So he can have one of those creatures. He's not a spell master just yet. Mm -hmm. Though this Phew. Gather will put him at enough cards to flip the Jace on this turn takes another Jace. And I really like this. So, he, yeah, then he can flip the Jace this turn, flashback of Gather next turn with Spell Mastery. And a lot of times these great pilots, it's all in the details. You see he main phase flips Jace's Vrin's Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Gets it up to six loyalty on this turn. Make it harder for Shaheen to say Grasp of Darkness it. Mm -hmm. It's a solid. Shaheen's third turn will be, well, Ruinous Path. Okay, I guess it didn't matter if it was a creature or a Planeswalker. It was going down both ways. Mm -hmm. You can never be loyal enough to avoid getting ruined. But Frank did find a replacement one last turn off that Gather. And Shaheen not showing any blue mana just yet. The Esper Master looking like a black-white deck. And most of his important spells are being cast off of black and white mana, though at a point that blue mana is going to be important. He wants to be casting his Jaces as Oath of Jaces. Yeah, and I believe he has both those cards in his hand. So for Frank, he replaces that Jace, plays an Evolving Wild. We go over to Shaheen. He has Choked Estuary, so he had the blue source. What was the fortunate part is Shaheen drew basic Swamp that turn, and that was very clutch. Yeah. Two Jaces, Oath of Jace. Dark Petition, and that Swamp. Those are the cards in Shaheen's hand. Well, the choice between Jace and Oath of Jace is sort of a question of mana efficiency. You kind of want Jace on the battlefield so you can flip into a Planeswalker faster, but Oath, Oath of Jace on a, on a later turn, it's much more difficult to cast it and another spell on the same turn. Shaheen's going to play Oath of Jace. Looks to discard one, maybe two Jaces. Looks like Jace Languish are going to be the discards. He has picked up a Liliana the Last Hope off that draw. And we're back to Frank. Now his O2 will turn into a Planeswalker. Plenty of prize amalgams to discard in Frank's hand. He'll start by discarding one. Now the Planeswalker flips. And he's still off of the payoff card since Shaheen transgressed that Haunted Dead. Looking for a second copy of that or that uh, Stitchwing Scob. Minus 
two. He's going to give a gather the pack flashback. And you got to see how many instants. There's one gather, two gathers in Frank's graveyard, but when he casts one of them, it'll leave the graveyard, so he's not actually spellmastered just yet. Mm -hmm. And his primary goal here is just to find a haunted dead to put in his graveyard anyway. If he found in the top five, he might not even put it in his hand. Yeah, if that was the only creature, probably would just put it in the bin. Well, let's see if that's the case. It's the only creature. Yeah, it definitely looks better in the graveyard to me. Looks that way to Frank, too. He won't take any of them. Now Frank has some choices about when he wants to put those cards on the battlefield. An argument for doing it on his own turn is that Shaheen won't be able to use infinite obliteration to stop them from ever coming back, if that were to be his uh, turn here. Because it's a delay trigger, he could obliterate prized amalgam, and then they just would never... Right, they'd still be in the graveyard yeah, if he graveyard. waits until Shaheen's turn. That's a really good point. You're going to see if Shaheen maybe punishes him for that. Here's Dark Petition. I like where you're going with this one. And Frank would be walking into a sweeper, sort of, but unless it was specifically the Descend Upon the Sinful, it wouldn't have been that bad. Yeah, we're at least one more turn off of Descend Upon the Sinful. Mm -hmm. Checking Shaheen does have Spell Mastery. Yes, he does. Three spells in the yard. He's going to take Infinite Obliteration. All right. And the reason that we saw Frank struggle so much in game one is he wasn't able to get a bunch of amalgams back. Once the spell resolves, his game plan is very mopey compared to Shaheen's. Shaheen's deck just is just looks better on every level yeah. now. The fact that it's a delayed trigger on amalgam is just going to hurt Frank right now. So Shaheen's going to name a card. I assume it's prized amalgam. We'll confirm on that. Mm -hmm. You want to put the Haunted Dead in before the name. Now, remember, you name the card on the resolution of the spell. You don't have to name it until it's resolving. So Frank just wants to put the Haunted Dead in here. Because if he doesn't activate it, Gene can be like, okay, I'll name Haunted Dead. Now your Amalgams are still in the graveyard, and you're not going to be able to get them back unless you get your Stitch Wing Scob. So he waits, and then when it resolves, he names Prized Amalgam and exiles all three from Frank's graveyard. It's kind of the same with Pithing Needle, right? It's like... When you have to tap your top, crack and your to it. fetch lands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me. Yeah. Don't get got. You can't say what card. If you ask, and one of the things, if you're playing this in a tournament, if you ask your opponent what card do you name, you're telling them that their spell resolved. Then you you can't. Once you ask them that question, then you don't get to respond anymore. So don't ask that question if you're not ready for that to happen. Yep. So all the prize amalgams are gone. Frank just gets the Haunted Dead. And the Spirit will have to rebuild some. Still has a Jace on two, has three power in play, but Shaheen's at a very healthy 20 life. Where does Scarin go from here? We'll start with an attack. Shaheen, first damage stuck onto him, puts him to 17. Jace ticks up to three. They'll be able to flash back. There is another Gather the Pack still in Frank's graveyard. So Jean Frank can work toward that. And now Frank's entire game plan is he's just all in on trying to make Elder Deep Fiend be good enough. Yeah, that's really his, his only threat left. He's got a couple distended Mindbenders as well. There's an Ishkana in the deck. Land six. It's going to emerge Elder Deep Fiend. Okay, you mentioned it off the Haunted Dead. Shaheen's really looking to have, he's hoping he has murder in his hand here. Looks like it just taps four lands. No instant on Shaheen's side. So that's a win for Frank. Yeah, this is what Frank needs to be doing here. Well, I'll correct that. A bit of a win. Shaheen does have a land and a Jace, so he gets to do something with the turn. Mm-hmm. 
It doesn't look like Frank has kept in cards like Kozilek's Returns. I don't think there's a way to get rid of that, Jace. He's just going to go attacking. Six damage onto Shaheen. He's got him to 11 now. Hmm. And this, this is a matchup where it really doesn't make any sense to have any copies of Returns still in the deck. Frank does not flash back the Gather just yet. He'll plus Jace up to four. Now we go to Shaheen. Upkeep. He's going to turn the 0-2 into a Planeswalker. He wants that Scry. This is the loot. So Jace draws discards. Discards Shambling Vent. Now he has a Planeswalker. Now he gets to scry one. He'll put a card to the bottom and then draw. Descend upon the Sinful. Yeah, that's a pretty good draw, and Shaheen's going to cast it. Mm -hmm. Frank's creatures are exiled. We look at Shaheen's graveyard. He's got creature, sorcery, instant. Does he have the Planeswalker? Oh, he's got a. He's got the shambling vent in there. There we go. Land creature, instant sorcery. Yeah, he'll get the angel. And the primary goal for that turn was just to get the deep fiend off the table. The fact that he w had delirium is kind of just gravy there. Well, keep in mind he discarded the shambling vent to the Jace that turn to make before he drew the descend. Mm -hmm. And that was his fourth. He didn't even play a land drop, so playing to a pretty good out. Now, Frank, no play. We go back to Shaheen. Scries one, gives flashback to a card in his graveyard. Looks like infinite obliteration. He's going to work again on Frank's deck. Choice between Haunted Dead or Deep Fiend here. Deep Fiend seems way more significant. Yeah, it's pretty interesting just how Shaheen's approaching this matchup. He could have given flashback to Ruinous Path and just shot down the Jace, but he's going for a way more late game plan here, saying, no, I'm going to obliterate all your things. Mm -hmm. I would like you to not be able to even play this game. Frank's going to put the Haunted Dead into play before Shaheen names a card. And because of that, he's now going to name Elder Deep Fiend. Mm -hmm. And now Frank is trying to get there with two twos that cost four mana and one one flying tokens. So let's see what Frank has left. He's got a Distended Mindbender, mm -hmm. a Stitchwing Scob. Ooh, a three one. A Ishkana Graf Widow. That one's significant. Only one copy, which is rather unfortunate. These Haunted Deads. I don't think Noose Constrictor is still in the deck. He might have a Nissa Vastwood Seer that he's boarded in. Yeah, he could have that, and he is at six lands. So the Nissa would just get eaten by this Angel token. That's the end of the list, though. Yeah, Frank is in a lot of trouble. Liliana will be played then, plus Shrinking the Haunted Dead Angel token swings. Jace down to three off the Angel. Frank checking his graveyard for perhaps Delirium. It is Grapple with the Past. Okay, so there's a judge call here, and, and, and here's the issue. Shaheen did not have Delirium when he cast Ascend upon the Sinful. There's not actually an instant in his yard. It's just creature, land, and a bunch of sorceries. So the angel token shouldn't have been made. Now, a lot of turns have passed. So the judge is going to have to make a ruling on how to resolve the situation from here. And if you're wondering how this happens, the first question the judge ascertains is, he, is whether or not he deems it like this was intentional. If it is, that's that's certainly not good. But if it's assuming that it's, not, I mean, Shaheen will get a. Assuming if it's intentional, then then we're in all sorts of hot water. But a lot of times, especially in games as complicated, players just make a mistake. So the judge is on that, and he says, "Okay, Shaheen made a mistake. Shaheen will get a warning for for sure." But then the judge has to decide what is the best way to resolve the game state from here. Mm -hmm. And one thing about Shaheen's deck, this is his only card with Delirium. He's checking Spell Mastery a lot more often with his Dark Petitions. Right. Pretty easy to get those mixed up. Right. So so the judge has two questions to do. Like I said, the first one he'll rule is whether or not it's intentional. We'll let you know these rulings as we get them. Um, and depending on that, then we'll get something else. It'll either have to... Either that will be the end of the game. If it was intentional, that'll certainly be the end of the game. If it's not, then the judge will have to figure out the best fix for the situation. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to approach that one, and we'll wait till we get a ruling on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not in my black shirt. 
Yeah, um, at that point, yeah, I don't, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll consider questions of if it was something where you could just easily back up and correct it, that's usually what they do in the situation. That really is no longer the case. We've had a couple turns of attacking, blocking. So we'll, we'll let you know when we know. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about what's happening in the game right now, though, the big tipping point was when Frank did not elect to bring back the Haunted Dead on his own turn, on a turn where Shaheen was getting into Dark Petition for Infinite Obliteration territory. Right. Could have put those prized amalgams onto the battlefield with the Haunted Dead. Elects not to do that, fear of a sweeper, ends up facing down something much worse. Unclear what the game looks like if he plays it the other way, but it has to be better than this. Right. Yeah, so... It's still, I mean, even without the 4-4 Angel, this game is still very tough for Frank. Yeah, and if you go back to that, uh, I was saying even if he didn't have Delirium, the yeah. Ascend is totally reasonable. You just have to get that Deep Fiend he, off the table. He still would have played it. Exactly, yeah. and just not get Deep Fiended to death. Right. It's not even about turning the corner. He's actually just crippling Scarin's deck. Yeah, he's doing the sort of complete grinding strategy where instead of trying to win, he's just going to make Frank's deck so bad at doing yeah. things if that, yeah, I have Planeswalkers in your deck's two twos, you know, okay, yeah, let's, let's fight. If I take out all of your reasonable avenues to win the game and I just cast some spells, I should beat you. Yeah, for, I mean, in Sha Shaheen's decks, as like these Esper midrange decks frequently are, there aren't bad spells. Okay, we're, we're getting the ruling now. Okay, so here's the ruling that was given. Uh, it was deemed it was not an intentional mistake. So Shane's been issued a warning, first of all. Uh, and if those those do matter, those add up another one would add up to a game loss over the course of the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, the judge has determined that we cannot back up. Too many actions have passed. So he's going to issue the warning but keep the game as played. Now Shaheen himself has said that what he and this is of his own accord. He's going to play the game as though the angel token was not there. He's not required to do that by the rules. Mm -hmm. That's a choice that he has made on his own. Uh, the uh don't attack with my Blightsteel Colossus. Uh, Martin Jews, I believe, had a similar thing come up once upon a time, and it's uh, the noble thing to do. All right, so we'll get you back to the match here as we continue it. Keep in mind, because we have to keep the game set accurate, the angel will remain on the board. Shaheen can't just... You're not allowed in the rules to just say, well, I don't want the angel token. Right. Uh, the he, judge has awarded him the angel token, but Shaheen doesn't want it. Yeah. Uh, he can't actually just say, move it off the board, because uh, we have to maintain game state, but Shaheen has said he's just going to play as though it's not there. There is no way inside the rules to give Frank back the Jace. So we'll continue. Frank emerges as Haunted Dead and takes all the remaining cards from Shaheen's hand, though. So the, here's some potential. He's going to get an Obnixilis and, a, and an Oath of the Jace out of Shaheen's hand. With a Jace on one, Shaheen's now just playing off the top of the deck. He'll scry two. He'll draw. Liliana minus two. Mills two. He can get a creature back. Uh, there's one good one. How about this Kalidus? Yeah, Liliana cannot get Oath of Jace back, so he'll go for a creature. I intended to cast grab Jace Friend's Prodigy, just picked up the wrong Jace card. And yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's what he said. He said he declared verbally to get back Jace and then picked up the wrong card, so th that's fine. Frank says, you know, you actually have to take Jace if you say you're going to play Jace. <laughs> he casts it and then passes the turn. You see Shaheen setting the angel to the side. So Distended Mindbender on Frank Scarin's side. It's a 3-5 because of the flipped Jace. He has a choice of Planeswalkers to attack. Or perhaps he goes at Shaheen. There is a Shambling Vent here. And Shaheen will chump block with the Shambling Vent. He gains two and goes to 13. Playing some defense for his Planeswalkers. And this is a neat game because a lot of times you'd be worried in Shaheen's situation that Frank will continue to deploy threats. We actually did a pretty good job of Jason Haunted Dead. But there aren't many more threats left in Frank's deck. Right. Haunted Dead specifically, he drew the one of Distended Mind better. He still has the Ishkana in his deck. That's something that he's drawing to to keep up this pressure. Jace is going to plus to shrink the Mindbender. Then Shaheen's going to tap and flip his O2 Jace into a new Jace Telepath Unbound. Legend ruling the old one away. He'll minus three it to give Flash back to the card Languish, and he'll just 
cast it. Distended Mindbender, one toughness off the Languish, and then Shaheen will plus the Liliana to finish it off. Mm -hmm. And Shaheen still had a land in hand there, so it looks like his hand was a little light. That's why you see him go for that backup Jace over the Kalidus. It was just more valuable. He just had to get through that turn, be able to flash back that spell, and now his position is much better than just casting a 3-4. Well, this is the situation where Shaheen's very impressive, because it's what his Esper decks do. He sits behind some Planeswalkers. His game plan is usually just keep them alive, doesn't really matter the loyalty, continue to answer your creatures, and eventually I'll find a way to win. And Shaheen's doing just that. Mm -hmm. And now the Kalidus is looking better. Yeah, Liliana Mys 2 finds Kalidus. Shaheen's hand is anguished on making an Ojatai's command. So he's in a commanding position, you could say. <laughs> to the slaughter for Frank. He's doing this on the draw. And you see, oh, he's Delirium. Yeah, that's Creature and Planeswalker. Wow, okay, he gets both the Liliana and the Cletus. Great draw for Frank. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. And then Cats transgressed the mind. So, huge turn for Frank. Anguish I'm making, I imagine, is worth a bit more than Ojutai's command. Well, when you only have about four cards that do anything left. Or sorry, yeah, I, I spoke back. Ojutai's yeah. command is more valuable. The thing is, Anguish I'm making can get Haunted Dead, but he's really just drawing to Ish Ishkana anyway. And he just he, he has to draw multiple Haunted Dead, really. He's empty-handed. A plus from Jace. He'd scryed into Narset. Narset pluses. Shaheen says go. He still has Anguish on making in two walkers. It's just it's hard to out mid-range the Esper deck. Mm -hmm. Frank top decks a Haunted Dead. It's number three. It's in the battlefield with a 1-1. One -one. Mm. And Frank really wants to top deck Ishkana from here, and the Ojitai's command would just cleanly answer that. So that, that pick makes a lot of sense. He gets Shaheen's last card. Anguished on making on Haunted Dead, exiles it. And it shouldn't be too tough for him to find an answer to the Spirit token and find some way to actually start winning the game. The Jace itself can stop the Spirit from being a factor. Going to give flashback to Dark Petition. Now that's one way to find an answer. He'll cast it. He is definitely Spellmastered, so three black. Going to go for just another card. If he has a land in hand, he could get Soren here. If he has to wait a turn, he could still get Soren. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fine. I mean, his Jace is down to one, and he didn't take care of the Spirit token, so he would lose a Jace to make that play. But, but yeah, maybe he still does it. Soren's great. So he just Dark Petitioned for Dark Petition. Oh, wow. That's flashbacks of when you used to cast Mystical Teachings for Mystical Teachings. I loved it. And yeah, he's going to go ahead and cast Narset, Rebound with Narset. Uses the three black mana and the remaining two to cast the second Dark Petition. And now he has three more black, and that spells on Rebound. Because mm -hmm. the first one was flashback, you can't actually rebound it. It right. gets exiled and it's gone. So the Narset's able to flashback the other copy. Uh, so that was a really cool play by Shaheen. He's going to lose the Jace, though, right? Yeah, that's just going to attack and take the Jace down. Gather the pack from Frank. Stitchwing Scob. Can he get two creatures? Well, could he be so lucky? No, just a 3-1 for four. There's approximately two creatures left in the deck, right? Uh, yeah, nothing that good. <laughs> so the Spirit will tap attack down the Jace. Frank will just cast the 3-1. And now here is the... The rebounded Dark Petition. Getting Emrakul for Shaheen. Open players, that is time in the round. Active player, finish your turn. Proceed to five additional turns to complete your match. Once again, open players, that is time. And now he lays out the graveyard. Time. Wants to know his card types. Looks like he has six different ones. He's got Enchantment, Land, Planeswalker, Creature, Instant, Sorcery. Six card types, seven land. Looks like 13 to me. And we agree. Emrakul plus Shambling Vent, Narset pluses. Shaheen's going to get to take Frank's next turn. Draws Gather the Pack. Well, can cast that and fail to find. That's pretty easy. I Gather fail to find naturally. Nissa Vast see her. One of the remaining thre threats Frank was drawing to. So that's going to be in the graveyard now. Citrine Scob attacks into Emrakul. She, Frank takes a pain off his Yavimaya Coast, goes to 18, and now Frank gets a real turn. Vessel of Nascency. Frank's going to play it and crack it. Takes another pain, down to 17. 
His deck's getting awfully thin here. Mm -hmm. Top four, there's a Jace in it, but he's going to go ahead and extend the hand. So it is Esper Control, Shaheen Sarani moving on. He is undefeated today, a perfect 3-0 in day two. He's now knocking on the door for top eight. For Frank Scarin, there are either two ships headed in the opposite direction. He's the other way. He is 0-3 on the day, drops to 9-3. Yeah, 